right, good evening, everyone. We have a relatively light business agenda, but uh, quite a few presentations. So we'll get started with our legally required first part, which is the public hearing of the budget. And to lead that, I'll turn it over to Dr. Joe Centimore. And then following Dr. Centimore's presentation, I will open it to any residents that want to comment on the budget as required legally. Dr. Centimore. Thank you, Mr. Petter, and good evening, everyone. So we started these workshops back in February, but the budget process itself really started uh, literally the beginning of the school year. And as it is every year, it is truly a team effort. Um, you know, I have to certainly thank my uh, immediate assistant, Mike Conway, who is that, uh, that uh, wizard of accounting behind the curtain. Um, you know, who, who's at my, my left and right side throughout the budget development process, our entire business office staff and our components throughout the, the district office. But then it goes down to all the departments, all the schools, all, you know, all those principals and supervisors working collaboratively with our staff to determine needs, to determine what our students need in order to succeed. And most of our board meetings, um, usually I follow you know, a, a curriculum presentation. Tonight I get the bat lead off, which is very cool. Um, but you, you, you get to see directly how the funding is invested into our children. And you see the fruits of that labor, you see the fruits of the support, you see the fruits of the leadership from our Board of Education and Superintendent. Our students matter, our staff matter, our parents matter, our community matters, and we each year when we put this budget development process uh, together, that is always, that is always goal number one. So it always starts with looking at where we've been, looking at where we currently are, and where we both need to and want to get. Um, and obviously here in South Huntington, uh, the bar is ever increasing. We are never satisfied, and we are always looking to see how we can do things better again, on behalf of our children. This budget, I'm very proud to say, as we have this hearing tonight, has many, many wonderful highlights. But we can start with the bottom line. We can start with the, 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 the fiscal impact on our community, something that our Board of Education, our leadership throughout the district is always very concerned with. We know we want to give our kids what they need. We know we want to give them the absolute best but we're always very mindful of our, of our taxpayers, our community, and especially in the current fiscal climate. So this year, our tax levy increase is 1.5%. In terms of other outstanding highlights, and you could see the emphasis on our kids, the academic programs, the mental health, the return of the nine period day at Walt Whitman High School. I know this is something that we're all beating our chest. We're so, so proud. Our district has already made tremendous strides over the years, and we'll put ourselves up against anyone across the nation. But now we have this nine period day, and we're really gonna be able to further address, further enhance the programs for all of our students. All students across the learning spectrum will benefit from this, as will the additional mental health providers. And we know how critically important this area is. There'll be a presentation later by one of our committees, the Health and Wellness Committee, uh, to further talk about that. And there are things that are also very important that directly impact the experience that our children have. You know, things like buses and making sure we replenish them. You know, having the opportunity to pilot at the middle school level, uh, uh, an immediate after school late bus program. Um, Safety and security, there's nothing more paramount than keeping our children, our staff. These are our family members, the, the community at large when they come onto our campus. Keeping everyone healthy and safe and secure, always paramount. And of course, the upkeep of our facilities, um, you know, again, uh, we feel like our facilities are second to none and the, the tremendous commitment uh, that we make each year to the upkeep of them. So in terms of our budgeted expectations, there is your tax levy number of 123 million and change. Again, that increase is a 
5% increase. So in terms of the other revenue, especially state aid, this year was kind of a unique year. Normally, and normally it is the case within a couple of days, the legislature is able to finalize a state budget by April 1st, and, and normally they do. This year there was some particular nuances uh, that went beyond some of the fiscal considerations. New York is a unique state in that oftentimes there's legislation that gets processed through the budget, the state budget development. Um, so when we had to finalize our budget uh, for budget adoption, we had to work off of a state aid number that was proposed by the governor, the executive proposal. Well, we're happy to report that in the final state budget, it does look like we're going to get a little bit more um, state aid, which is great because uh, you see how we do apply fund balance, and so that additional state aid uh, can be applied to fund balance. Also, there's a component in our state aid revenues uh, where we, uh, based on what we spend, where, where we get reimbursed, and sometimes as you live a school year, you sometimes spend a little bit less than you thought, but then you get a little bit less aid in terms of that reimbursement aid. Um, and so this actually helps to, uh, to potentially address any, any aid shortfalls because we didn't need to spend as much in terms of those reimbursements. In terms of uh, the total revenue, that also is, is the budget for the district, uh, a little bit over $209 million. Buses, um, as I've mentioned in many of our workshops together, we have a hybrid transportation program we have a pretty robust fleet of, of large buses and, and minibuses, minivans as they're called, but we also contract out. We have a great uh, partnership with Educational Bus Corporation. But in terms of our own fleet, we have to make sure that we not only maintain them, but when the time comes, you know, we replenish. And so uh, as we did last year, we have a, a good investment in new buses for this upcoming school year two large buses as we as we budgeted for uh, about eight large buses last year but now also uh, seven of the mini buses so we're furthering that commitment to replenish and upkeep our fleet and again mention there of the piloted program for the Stimson Lake bus I mentioned facilities earlier and I've talked in the past about how committed our, our district is and, and our uh, facilities committee that seats several board members chaired by our board president has cross representation from people with all backgrounds including many who are directly involved in our curriculum and our instructional areas because when we invest into our facilities again there's a direct correlation in investing into our academic programs and you know for the upcoming school year you further see that investment even with something like bleachers okay you keep in mind, it's not just the athletic program, which, by the way, is an extension of our physical education and health education program, and also all of our social emotional wellness uh, initiatives, but it's also an opportunity for, uh, you know, for our arts, our, our marching band, um, uh, our, our intramurals uh, programs as well. And then you can see how you know, you know, um, a lot of the areas are going to be able to address those career explorations that are very big across the nation right now and certainly here on the island and the metropolitan area. And again, you also see that safety and security component. So I mentioned earlier the tax levy will be 1.5%, but an important point of emphasis, especially as we've gone through the COVID and now post-COVID phase, is for the third year in a row, a sub, a sub two percent tax levy increase third year in a row thanks to the uh, the efforts of a board of education uh, and of course the you know the entire team putting the budget development together to realize that uh, our community uh, has been hit very hard economically in small businesses and that has been certainly a focal area for the last three years um, one thing I want to point out is that is the key differentiation that you'll see um, the budget to budget growth of a little over or almost 7%, that is not the tax levy increase. The tax levy increase is 1.5%. That is the key number, the key percentage to remember. 
This slide you've seen before, it has a lot of numbers. I'll highlight a couple. Again, boom in red, top right, 1.5% tax levy increase. In the past, I've spoken about our savings account, uh, those designated reserve areas, the, the general un unassigned fund balance. These are areas that school districts want to avoid uh, applying as much as possible. And what we, we're continuing to do is, is continuing to decrease that reliance, that utilization. And so we're, we're certainly heading in the right direction with reducing um, uh, that reliance, but it's something that we have to stay very mindful of as we go into the next budget development and so on. And then again, the bottom number in green, a little over $209 million, our operating budget for your consideration. In terms of the estimated tax rate, what your individual home uh, will be assessed at and your individual specific tax increase will be. At this time of the year, school districts do a guesstimate based on trend analysis, and then we try to be ultra conservative on top of that. So this way, when the town lets us know in the early fall what the actual rate will be, it, 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 the, the idea, the goal is for, for the better than what we told, told you our estimate would be, and that is the average, uh, and obviously some people will be a little bit below that, some people will be a little bit above that. So on May 16th, when our community goes to vote, Proposition 1 will be the budget. But there will also be a second proposition, and that is because that every two years, our community has to vote on uh, whether or not to continue with our ex officio student member to the Board of Education. And uh, Samantha is our current member, uh, student member. So that is Proposition 2 for your consideration. Goals for the district. I, you know, I touched upon at the very beginning. Um, you know, ever upward and onward, ever upward and onward, never satisfied. And, um, you know, always, always striding for excellence. Once again, the budget vote, week from tonight, starting at 3 o'clock, Wolf Women High School, South Gym. Also that night will be the second proposition for the student ex officio board member, as well as our Board of Education trustees. Thank you, Dr. Senamore. Does the board have any questions for Dr. Senamore? All right. But then I'll open it up to the public. Would any member of the public like to address the board on the budget? All right, once, twice. All right, we'll close the public hearing. Thank you, Dr. Senamore. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Moving on to, we have a curriculum presentation. This is a follow-up from earlier this year when Dr. Steele introduced the concept of changes to the elementary report card. And uh, as promised, she's coming back to update us. Dr. Steele, welcome. <laughs> it's on. All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, I am happy to present to you the final product of our elementary report card. Um, just a little background, we figured that um, this would be a great time to update our elementary report card with the expectation of the next generation learning standards for the 2023-2024 school year. Um, we were also happy to be able to move to trimesters with this new report card. That gives us more consecutive teaching time uh, in between marking periods. And we, are, we were able to maintain those two parent-teacher conferences and also align the conferences more um, with when the report cards are actually being distributed. So before we look at the report card, I have to start by thanking this phenomenal committee. Um, there's a host of teachers up there uh, representing all grade levels, all programs, um, who did a phenomenal job. Uh, they worked, for, worked on this for months. Um, some months we met two times a, year, uh, a month, sometimes we met three times a month. Um, but in addition to our teachers, we had some parents that met with us. They gave us some valuable input. And of course, our fabulous uh, administrators, our assistant principals uh, in each elementary school. 
uh, that um, contributed as well. So um, I want to thank all of them for their time, their um, thoughtfulness, uh, and their professional conversation around putting this document together. So let's look at uh, a couple of what well, we have. Kindergarten. Hold on. I need a regular mouse. There we go. All right, so the kindergarten report card um, looks a little different uh, as far as the language from the other report cards because kindergarten has many more foundational skills that are part of it. Um, but the, all the report cards are pretty much outlined the same. Um, one of the things that the teachers and the parents were happy that we focused on was the language of the performance, um, the performance key. We use language such as progressing towards, um, not yet meeting, because we wanted the report card to have more of a positive tone to it, meaning that our kids, and we know our children, are always striving towards meeting their best. So with language like that, we felt like that was a good, um, good adjustment. Uh, the rest of the report card is really designed the same way the standards are. Um, you'll look, uh, you'll see some shaded areas for the kindergarten um, in the first trimester, and that just means that they just haven't been exposed to that part of their learning yet, being so early in their educational career. Um, but as we move down for each subject area, we have each subcomponent that um, is looked at, and then all of the special areas are continuing to be part of this report card. And down at the bottom, where we normally would have uh, behaviors, uh, the teachers felt very strongly about changing um, how we term that. So we term that habits for success. Again, going along with that positive tone um, of this report card. In addition, each report card also um, will have a host of comments, which was many, too many to put up here. Um, but that's going to continue along, and a lot of the comments have been changed again to have more of a positive tone. So if we go back to the presentation, we can look at, I keep doing the wrong thing, grades one and two. Again, you'll see a similar design, the same, um, but the language changes a little bit as the expectations for the kids will change. So here you'll see more, more where they're being asked to identify, describe, um, to apply certain things, um, expressing thoughts. Um, with math, they'll do the same. There's a little more rigor involved with that. And then again, we have the special area and habits for success. So what does effort mean? Is that like the overall score? Or overall that... effort for every content area. So sometimes, um, again, wanting to keep it positive, um, we'll have children that'll put in a tremendous amount of effort, but some, sometimes they may need, may need special assistance for something, but that doesn't affect the effort that they're putting into their work. And then we'll go to three, five. Same design, but then you'll see uh, definitely um, much more, uh, you know, a rigor there. Um, we're looking at inferential comprehension, literal comprehension. Um, we're also asking them to analyze more, to apply more, to interpret and solve using multi-steps. Um, when we get down to science, we talk more about inquiry, um, process skills, and with social studies, we talk more about interpreting information. So it's following along pretty much with the expectations of each standard. So what is that going to look like when we talk about trimesters? So for the beginning of the year, we'll go, uh, the first trimester will go to the 21st of November, which will give us about 51 teaching consecutive days uh, in that marking period. And the conferences will follow along not too long after that. Uh, the second trimester will go through to March 1st, which will give us about 58 days of consecutive teaching. Um, again, with conferences being not too long after that. And then the final marking period starts March 2nd and goes to the end of the year. However, we had to allow time in there for all of the New York State testing 
um, in the intermediates. We have ELA and math. Um, we'll have science investigations now in the intermediate. Then we'll have a science test in grade five and eight. And then we have all those wonderful end of the year activities in June. So with accounting for all of those, um, we, we're still gonna average about 60 to 65 teaching days uh, until the end of the year. And that doesn't include the holidays as well. So where are we going from here? We are in the process of creating a report card guide um, for the teachers to use, uh, and especially for parents to understand, and the teachers will have this on hand um, for our first conference time to uh, go over any questions parents may have. Um, with the help of Dr. Rice, this uh, report card is now being built within Infinite Campus. So what you see here is pretty much a document. It will not look like this in Infinite Campus. The layout will be a little different, but all the standards will remain the same. Um, and teachers will have an opportunity to view that um, starting in June, uh, where they'll be able to go in and examine the document, um, and as well as we'll have some professional development for them with the assistant principals in June and in September, so they can further define that, define that academic key to make sure that we have consistent expectations across uh, all the grade levels. So again, I cannot thank this committee enough for the, the hard work that they put into this, and we really uh, feel very strongly about this document. Moving forward, so um, okay. does anybody have any questions? Yes, Ms. Iyer. Thank you so much, Dr. Seal, and to the entire oh. committee for their effort. Um, my question is: Currently, the dual language elementary students get an English report card in the first and third quarters, and then a Spanish language competency grid in the second and fourth quarters. So, how will we? How will the new system address the dual language students? It, it's not going to change. It's just going to move towards more aligned with the trimesters. Mrs. Blanco was, was part of this. She's actually um, working with the dual language teachers who were involved in this process as well, um, as well as just translating our report card for us. So she's, it's going to be more aligned, but the expectations will remain the same. So I'm sorry, just to clarify, Dr. Seal. Mm -hmm. So will dual language students get two English report cards and one Spanish report card then, or will it depend on their homeroom if they get two Spanish report cards and one English report card? No, they'll get the, the, the regular dual language, the Spanish report card and an English report card in addition to whatever they would have gotten from dual language, the competency, um, the competency piece. So they'll get, they'll get marked in English and Spanish Correct. now for each trimester? Yes. Oh, okay. Yep. Great. Mm -hmm. Did I answer that question? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Other questions? Board's thoughts on the trimesters? Okay. okay. Great. Thank All you, right. Dr. Steele. Thank you. Good job. Thank you to you and the committee and the curriculum committee as well. Okay. Our final presentation of the evening, health and wellness presentations. It's been a, uh, a year in the making. so. Turn it over to Ms. Papilla. Good evening, everyone. Uh, okay, how you, is it down? Is this, yeah. Got it. I got it. Got it. Yeah, I got it. So it's my pleasure to formally introduce um, this newly formed wellness committee that was um, really established to serve as a support and resource for our district um, in terms of our support staff, our students, and our teachers. Um, in all aspects of what we define as wellness. And um, I'm so excited to be able to introduce our committee members and shortly um, to be able to go over what wellness is defined as with us. So just to, gosh, I'm not good with this. There we go. So the wellness committee um, actually is, uh, had, had elevated from a district level committee and has now a board level committee that has been established since August 2022. Our current membership um, actually has cross -re representation. Um, some of our committee members, which I'll introduce, um, we have two of our board trustees as, that serve as co-chairs, Mrs. Erin Meyer, as well as Mr. Fred Scragg. Um, we have our ex officio board member, Samantha Regalado. We also have our district um, level administrators, Mr. David Barth, as our supervisor of curricular, um, excuse me, as uh, athletics and physical education, and Ms. Sheila Busey, um, representing nutrition services, and myself representing student services. Um, we all bring a very unique perspective to what we consider in our areas in terms of wellness, and we'll certainly go into those aspects of what has inspired and guided our conversations in regard to 
revising the existing policy um, that is uh, for the board to be able to review. But before I do that, I'd like to turn the mic over to Mrs. Meyer to be able to review our mission statement and um, our commitment. Thank you so much, Mrs. Papillo. And it's um, been a pleasure and continues to be a pleasure to co-chair this with Mr. Scrag. Um, this is an area that I'm very passionate about and we're extremely excited to work in, to continue to work as a committee. So I'll just read aloud our mission statement that has really been the North Star in everything that we've done thus far for the Wellness Committee this year. It's a little small, so I'll, I'll just read it quickly, but the mission of the South Huntington Wellness Committee is to ensure that all students, staff, and faculty have the tools and resources to maximize their holistic wellness, including, but not limited to, physical, mental, emotional, and nutritional wellness. The Wellness Committee is committed to continually evaluating the wellness of our community and making the best possible recommendations on fulfilling those needs in a consistent and equitable manner. So really, our focus is holistic wellness. And previously, the wellness policy for the district was really focused primarily on nutrition. And Mrs. Busey, in a minute, I'll turn it over to her and she'll go through uh, nutrition, which is one of our four focus areas currently. And she has done an absolutely phenomenal job this year, going out to many other districts, sourcing other policies, and really helping guide us in creating a more comprehensive policy to have this focus on holistic wellness. And then I'll also just call out um, consistent and equitable. We really feel strongly that wellness is, should be equally accessible to all of our students, to our staff, and to our faculty and really top of mind for us is acknowledging that this is a continuously changing landscape. And we're committed to making sure that we're following the changes in those landscape and making sure that the recommendations and guidance that we're giving to the rest of the cabinet and the board are based on the needs of all of our students. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to Mrs. Busey. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to read my notes. Uh, I'm better, I feel more comfortable doing it that way. Um, this is a wonderful opportunity to speak about school nutrition and its importance in the district's health and wellness policy. My focus is on the nutritional aspect of our district and its plans moving forward. This school year allowed us to return to many of the wonderful nutritional patterns that were in place prior to COVID. Students eating in the cafeterias and served through the serving line is the greatest visible change. Having our children enjoy this time with friends away from their classrooms is so important for their emotional well-being, coupled with a healthy lunch meal, and that time is well spent. One key focus of our nutrition program has been to remove the individual food packaging that has been put in place during COVID restrictions. Removing these barriers has allowed us to be more creative in both food preparation and presentation when serving meals. This change widens our accessibility to food choices as well. The simple addition of sauces and spices makes a huge difference in the taste of foods. This was not possible when using prepackaged products. We have also been able to increase our fresh fruits and vegetable programs dramatically with monies that were allocated from New York State. During COVID, many fresh fruits and vegetables were simply not available. This summer, we'll be introducing a program that has been on our nutrition bucket list for many years, a baking and cooking camp for students that, were enter that are entering grades one through eight. We will be working in tandem with Janine D'Elia and Jackie Petrino, Petino, who will be presenting the non-cooking portion of the program. Our sessions will teach the students many cooking basics, which we hope to be lifetime lessons. The response has been wonderful with many time frames already closed out and waiting lists formed. What are some new plans for the 23-24 school year? We continue to make improvements to the, to the nutrition program year to year, but one goal that remains constant is our commitment to finding ways to increase our daily participation and to keep the students engaged in our program's meals because hungry kids cannot learn. The constant challenge continues to be how do we achieve that? One idea we will be introducing is Try It Tuesday. This will be our way of testing possible new menu options with our students, presenting new food cho choices by using varying, varying cooking methods allows us to see what works best for them while keeping the integrity of the menu item. 
Our plan is to have the tastings done during the course of the student's lunch period, where they are the most relaxed and usually the most honest. We will also be introducing new refrigerated vending machines to our middle and high school students. We have found these ages to be our most challenging. Students are in the buildings many more hours of the day and move from location to location constantly. They also have outside food options to choose from when eating. These new mach machines will be monitored and refilled daily by our program. Fresh fruits, parfaits, and salads are just a few options that will be included in the program. It is our goal to continue to offer students healthy choices at any time during the course of their school day. The machines will be attached to the lunch program's POS system to allow for meal credit when reimbursable meal items are chosen. Apple Pay and all other current forms of payment that students are accustomed to will be accessible on these machines. The key element is ease for students to make the purchases. Lastly, we will be monitoring the success of the summer cooking pro camp to see if it is feasible for us to introduce a similar after school program during the course of the school year. Our program is very excited for the 23-24 school year and hope the students will be as well. Thank you. I'd like to introduce David Barth, who now will talk about the athletic piece. Thank you. Uh, perfect. Uh, <laughs> we didn't practice this part before. Uh, all right, so these are the areas that we looked at. We looked at uh, physical wellness for our health and wellness policy. And we have so many great programs in place already. Uh, and with the support of everybody in this room, we've been able to add on to what we already had in place. And when we look at these categories, our clubs and activities, we have over 20 fitness-based before and after school clubs and activities. And that's on top of the other 30 that may not be fitness-based, but certainly focus on students' mental health. Uh, additional physical education and health education courses. Uh, at Walt Whitman, we have advanced strength and conditioning starting next year. Yoga and mindfulness. Everybody can dance, our outdoor physical education, and a mental health education elective for students to take. And our focus, our K-12 focus is on individual pursuits and overall wellness, which go in line with my presentation from last week on the uh, 2020 physical education standards. Um, in athletics, we have 81 different teams with the addition of the new sports you see up there, girls wrestling, girls flag football, unified bowling, and coming in the fall, game day cheerleading. And our additional teams at Stimson, uh, soccer, volleyball, and basketball. And then you look at our recess that we currently have in place. We've organized activity, activities with a certified physical education teacher and the opportunity for free play. The main thing when you look at all areas here is opportunity. When students have the opportunity to be involved during the school day and after school, they have the opportunity to be successful. So we feel as if we can find those opportunities to engage students in physical activity and wellness, that we can connect with them and give them uh, the chance to be successful. How were the additional uh, teams of soccer, volleyball, and basketball received? Phenomenal. Um, it gives every team has been at capacity. Um, so we've doubled participation in all those sports. Uh, and again, gives those students an opportunity to continue to play. And as you said, with the new sports as well, we look at girls wrestling, girls flag football, unified bowling that we've had this year. A lot of students who haven't participated in sports before have found something to participate in. So all those additional teams and new sports have really created more opportunities for our students. Great, thank you. So uh, this is my area of expertise. So for social, emotional, um, mental health, wellness, one of, a couple of things I wanted to be able to highlight in terms of what has also been um, informative and kind of inspiring to the committee um, is the initiatives that have started as a result of the work from the district level and building level committees, um, who have certainly been so very supportive since the time that we've, we reopened schools uh, for our students and engaging in building-based, theme-based type of social-emotional learning activities to support transitions um, back to school, connecting, um, being respectful, understanding and tolerating, understanding differences among, among the, their peers. Um, also, we are now in the second year of our social emotional learning survey through Panorama, Panorama Education that was distributed to students in grades three through 12, who is, which has certainly been very uh, informative and in terms of guiding decisions about the curricular tools and resources that we um, implement within our classes. Um, 
I also want to be able to highlight some of the investments that the district has also incorporated during this past school year and anticipated going into the next school year. Um, we currently have our Northwell Health Behavioral Center Partnership, um, which is our first uh, for our first year and anticipate to continue for the next school year. We've certainly benefited from um, having access to the educational series, not only for our professionals, like our pupil personnel services staff, our social workers, psychologists, behavior specialists, but also our parents. Um, they provide our community newsletters and access to resources and tools and um, has been very well received by our PPS staff and certainly look forward to a collaborative partnership for the subsequent school year. I also want to be able to highlight as a result of the committee work, thank you again to our committees, um, the launch of the second step social emotional learning curriculum that has been started in January, February um, in our buildings in grades K through eight. These are classroom based lessons that are taught by teachers and um, really help emphasize and support um, our being uh, safe, respectful, and responsible, but teaching it in a more explicit and uh, kid-friendly way um, that is has grade-based les lessons and activities that are most appropriate and build upon uh, the skills that are taught from the previous year. And lastly, as my colleague Dr. Centimore has mentioned about the investment in, uh, in our children's mental health is the expansion and support of our mental health support teams by being able to add to additional uh, staff members to, uh, to be able to provide more immediate access to our students in regard to their social emotional learning as well as their health. Okay. Now for this next slide, I would be, I forgot to mention one of our other committee members is Ms. Liz DeMonte, who's from the Public Relations Department. I'll invite her up to be able to speak a little bit about art therapy. Thank you, April. Uh, so the intention behind the art therapy pilot program at Walt Women High School is to provide students with additional support and opportunities to engage in creative expression and art making as a way of reducing stress, anxiety, promoting mindfulness, as well as self-awareness. So as the district photographer, as many people recognize me as, um, I'm also a licensed creative arts therapist and a class of 2010 Walt Women graduate. I was very excited to meet with Walt Women's Natural Helpers and Ambassadors Clubs. Um, where I showed them how to create Zentangle inspired artworks uh, using simple materials that they could find at home. Uh, the purpose of meeting with these groups was to get an idea of whether or not students would be interested in participating in this type of program in the future, while also showing them how the art making process can be very therapeutic and serve as one of many healthy coping mechanisms that they can engage in. Uh, the response from the students and the teachers uh, was incredible and they were very receptive and I, I told them they don't have to be an artist in order, order to engage in this type of activity, and they absolutely loved it. So I'm very thankful to be doing this type of work with the school that I graduated from. Thank you, that was great. Yes. <laughs> and now, um, Fred Scragg would like to say anything on the PTA side of this? Um, so the PTA, um, that I work with on the PTA Council has focused some of their efforts um, this year on bringing in um, some of the additional programming that they, they provide to the schools um, on issues of wellness. Um, throughout the year, we've had programs um, such as um, recognizing our emotions in literature, uh, mindfulness matters, um, SEPTA has been bringing in yoga several times, um, and they're providing each building with an opportunity for their students to participate in a, in a yoga, um, piece of yoga curriculum. Um, and then just other things um, for our, our middle school students, like Don't Press Send, Ryan's Story, um, and a Kindness Challenge, um, that really kind of help them understand the world that they live in and, and a lot of the big feelings that they're feeling on, on an everyday basis and how to navigate those. So our PTAs are, are definitely moving forward in, and jumping on the wellness bandwagon as well. And lastly, we have a student's perspective. So I invite Ms. Regalado to be able to share her perspective on our wellness committee and the work that um, impacts our students. So it has been a privilege to serve on this committee. It's been really enlightening and exciting to get to discuss something that is very important and prominent in my life as well. Um, for your sake and for the sake of all your eyes, I'm going to summarize that like 12 pine font for you. <laughs> um, 
Students performance, behavior, and their quality of life are obviously all impacted greatly by stress. This just emphasizes the vitality of mental health awareness and wellness support within our district. 49% of students report feeling great stress and 31% of students report feeling somewhat stressed on a daily basis. So this is obviously practically the majority of students, which just proves that stress has become quoted into like student life and how important it is to really put that emphasis on it. Um, as someone who is usually seen as a high achieving student, I personally have felt the impact of stress in my life. You can ask some of my teachers, they've definitely seen that effect on me. Um, and personally, I found comfort in discussing with other teachers or counselors and expressing myself through different art forms like music, voices has really been a very integral part. Um, and when I talked to other students at Whitman, a lot of them reported that they felt the greatest amount of support coming from student services, guidance, um, natural helpers, and friends and family. So that just kind of proves how important it is to really emphasize these perspectives and these ways that they can get the help. And finally, it just emphasizes the role of sports, the arts, mental wellness courses, not, and training, not only for teachers, but also students to be able to feel comfortable to even reach out and to get this help when they need it and to kind of emphasize that stress is a part of life, but it's very important to learn how to cope with it healthily and to get the support you need, so. Thank you, great job. Very nice. Before we conclude, um, I wanna be able to just wrap up a little bit about just what our committee has focused on in terms of health and wellness. Um, I'll have Ms. Sheila Busey be able to go over that. Excuse me. Okay. Our committee has used the month of May to focus on our individual health and wellness in three aspects, physical, nutritional, and emotional strengths. In order to make this challenge a success, we reached out to some very talented South Huntington community members who volunteered their time to highlight important lessons. The wonderful piece of this puzzle is that each lesson being taught has focused on a different demographic segment of our community. The classes are as diverse as we are and there's something for everyone to enjoy. Our month began with physical wellness as it was highlighted in the Under the Lights event using our Walt Women High School track. Friends and family members walked with music in the background. In the center of the field, strength training was offered by two Walt Women High School graduates who now own a successful local gym in Huntington. Yoga with Blair, and the Zen Den with Michelle and Kristen provided us with strength as well as meditative learning. Such important lessons for us all to learn, lean into in our hectic lives. Tomorrow night, the Long Island Fun Runners Group will be exposing our youngest students to the key facets on correct running techniques. This event will be introducing lifetime lessons to our kids as they continue their path in running. Each morning, we have a new nutritional tip of the day hosted, posted onto the district's Facebook and Instagram pages. The notes are short but to the point and have been a good tidbit of learning thanks to Liz Damonte. We still have a few more lessons to learn before May is over. Take a look at our calendar which is posted on the district website. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our presentation for the Wellness Committee. Any questions? Great job. Really good. I just Excellent. Want to thank everyone again on the committee. It's been a great foundational year. And as Mrs. Pusey mentioned, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So don't forget to register for Chef in Motion. Move your body, calm your mind. So we'll see you there. <laughs> Thank you. Really uh, terrific presentation. And it really shows how multifaceted wellness is. And, uh, and you really covered it from so many angles. So great job, both of you. Right. Thank you, Ms. Perpilla. Terrific job on that presentation. Uh, probably your last presentation with us. And, uh, and that's sad, but uh, it's always sad when somebody leaves us. Uh, but it's also rewarding when we see them go on to great things, and we take great pride in that. Uh, Ms. Propillo joined our South Huntington family in 2013 as the supervisor of curricular services. In this position, she supervised the reading department, bilingual instruction, and adult education, in addition to many other responsibilities. From day one, she worked diligently to meet the goals of our district, working tirelessly to enhance and improve academic performance with an emphasis on closing the achievement gap. Her in-depth knowledge of intervention and prevention programs, along with her innovative ideas, cemented her as a go-to member of our administrative team. Recognizing the asset that we had in-house, Ms. Propilla rose to the level of Assistant Superintendent for Student Services in August 2019. 
In this new role, she once again displayed the qualities that make her such an outstanding administrator. Perhaps her best quality is her ability to remain patient and calm and exude constant professionalism, even in the most challenging of situations. Her approach to supervising the Student Services Department has been refreshing. Her decisions have been consistently made with a scholastic view in mind, and there is no doubt that this belief in our district's mission elevated the quality of instruction for our students. As she begins the next chapter of her professional life, we in South Huntington already know the tremendous asset that Western Suffolk BOCES has. And although she'll be greatly missed, our educational family could not be more happy for her and her family as she takes on this new, exciting role. April, I speak for the entire Board of Education when I thank you for your decade of service to us and all you've done to support our students, our staff, and our community. Uh, congratulations. And uh, I know you're, uh, you'll be taking a lot of memories with you, but uh, we wanted to give you a little thing, something a little additional to take with you. Um, so we have uh, some flowers for you on behalf of the board. <laughs> not expecting that and anybody who knows me I am not an emotional person in in the professional environment Wow um, um, I am truly thankful to have been able to work here as you said wow for 10 years um, I'm so grateful to have been surrounded by such dedicated professional and committed educators and teachers and support staff I'm able to be able to elevate and, and move on because of the learning experiences I've had here. You've all contributed to my professional growth. You've all com contributed to keeping me smiling, even though I, there are some very stressful days. <laughs> um, but I thank all of you, and I know I won't be too far because obviously South Huntington is a component district of Western Suffolk Boaties, but um, I truly find this as my professional and professional home and I do thank you sincerely for allowing me to be able to have the opportunity to be able to serve the district in two different capacities over the time that I've been here so thank you to the Board of Education thank you to my my administrative cabinet team thank you for um, being a support thank you to the building level teams administrators I will certainly miss y'all um, just thank you I'm, I'm actually Overwhelmed. Thank you very much. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we'll uh, just take a two-minute break. Uh, anyone needs to use the restroom? And then we'll uh, pick up with the meeting.
Moving on to the business agenda. I'll take a motion to adopt the agenda. Ms. Lacara, seconded by Mr. Scrag. Any questions on the agenda? All in favor? Any opposed? All right. Items C through F require one resolution for adoption. Those are our minutes and our financial items and our schedule of bills. This is our motion. Ms. Byer, seconded by Mr. B. and Gasso. Any questions on items C through F? All in favor? Any opposed? All right. Uh, we have a uh, letter of support uh, from Western Suffolk BOCES. And uh, their administrative budget was passed by each of the 18 component school districts. And two incumbent candidates, Jeanette Santos and Peter Wunsch, as well as a new uh, member, Michelle Custera, were elected and to serve on Western Suffolk BOCES Board of Education. So it'll be uh, Mr. Pilla's new home there. Uh, and we also got a thank you note from the Suffolk South Huntington Public Library. Their budget passed as well. All right, moving on to new business. First item of new business is the adoption of tax anticipation notes for the fiscal year 2023-2024. Is there a motion? Mr. Bronson, seconded by Mr. Scrag. Dr. Senamore? Thank you, Mr. Ciappetta. So for Suffolk County school districts, such as South Huntington, uh, this is an annual occurrence. Uh, Suffolk County schools uh, do not receive their tax revenue at the onset of the school year. It comes several months into the school year. And so uh, essentially the, t the tax anticipation note or the TAN is uh, essentially borrowing uh, based on anticipated revenues and we have to budget for those um, expenses, those interest expenses. Okay. Any questions? All in favor? Any opposed? Okay. Moving on to new business. Item number two is the approval of a memorandum of agreement with the South Huntington Administrators Association. Is there a motion? This is by seconded by Mr. Bronson. Mr. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Ciappetta. For the Board of Education's approval is the memorandum of agreement with the South Huntington Administrators Association. The agreement speaks to a five-year contract that keeps yearly salary increases in line with the district's available tax cap with increases ranging between 2.2 and 2.8%. I'd like to thank the members of their negotiating team, Dr. Matt Murphy, and also Mr. Stephen Toto for their professionalism throughout the negotiations. Yes, and thank you, uh, Mr. Smith, for uh, pushing that across the finish line. Any questions? This has been uh, discussed multiple times in exact session. All in favor? Any opposed? All right. Moving on to item number three is the approval of the Pat A. DeRosa Memorial Scholarship. Is there a motion? Uh, Mr. Biancasso, seconded by Mr. Scrag. Dr. Dillia? Yes, Mr. DeRosa was the former uh, music director here in South Huntington for 24 years. Uh, he recently passed away in March, uh, but he lived to be 102 years old. Uh, and I've heard wonderful, I, obviously I don't, I didn't, know the individual but I've heard wonderful things about him and uh, what a special individual he was and uh, there is a $500 annual scholarship in his name for a musically inclined student. Beautiful. Thank you Dr. Zulia. Uh, Mr. Rose was, was a great man. He was when he was inducted into the South Huntington Hall of Fame he he had his sax with him and he actually played with the students that same day and he was just amazing and continued to play for years after that, so uh, this is really uh, a very nice tribute to a very distinguished and, uh, and warm man. Any questions? All in favor? Any opposed? All right. Moving on to item number four is the approval of the Spirit of 76 Service Scholarship motion. Ms. Blacara, seconded by Mr. Biangasso. Dr. Senamore, we'll let you do this one. Thank you, Mr. Ciappetta. So the brave women and men who don the uniform of our nation's armed forces are very near and dear uh, to my family's heart. Um, my wife's grandfather served uh, back in the mid 40s. My uncle fought in Korea. My father fought in Vietnam. And so this is just a very small token of our family's appreciation to um, those students who are graduating from Whitman and either directly enlisting into the armed forces or attending one of our nation's military academies. Thank you, Dr. Sanamore. Any questions? All in favor? Any opposed? Thank you for doing that. Moving on to item number five is the approval of the New York State School Facilities Scholarship. Motion. Mr. Scrag, seconded by Mr. 
Bronson. Dr. Delia. Yes, this is a scholarship from the New York State School Facil Facilities Association. I'd like to thank Dennis Martin, our facilities director, for being very instrumental in providing this annual $1,000 scholarship to us, Walt Whitman Senior. All right, any questions? All in favor? Any opposed? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Martin, for facilitating that. Moving on to item six is the approval for board members to attend the Nassau Suffolk School Boards Association annual dinner, as well as the superintendent. Is there a motion? Ms. Meyer seconded by Ms. LeCarrie. Any questions? All in favor? Any opposed? All right. Moving on to item number seven is the addition of election official for our May 16th vote motion. Mr. Bean got so seconded by Mr. Scrag. Any questions? This is adding Ms. Barbara Della Caprini to act as the official at the school budget vote elections. All in favor? Any opposed? All right, item eight is the approval for the placements of students by the committees on special education and preschool education, various states listed. Is there a motion? Ms. Meyer seconded by Mr. Bronson. Any questions? All in favor? Any opposed? All right, resolution eight carries. We'll move on to personnel schedules now. Personnel, schedule, personnel schedules two, three, six, nine, 10, 11, 16, 17, 20, and 22. Is there a motion? Mr. Bronson seconded by Mr. Biangasso. Any questions? Uh, Mr. City Pettit, I need to recuse myself um, okay. from this vote. Okay, all in favor? Any opposed? All right, so six votes in favor and one recusal. The recusal is Mr. Scragg. And I want to wish a congratulations to somebody who showed up on the personnel schedule. As we mentioned, Ms. Propilla will be leaving us, and uh, we had to fill her spot. And we'll be filling her spot with Dr. Rihanna Fulton. Congratulations. <laughs> and Rihanna, in her uh, short time here, has made a, a huge impact across the board, particularly uh, with technology, and is really uh, made us, uh, brought us up to speed and made us a leader in the area. And uh, we know she's going to do great in her new role. So congratulations. All right. Uh, personnel postings are listed. Our, we've got two meetings left for the year, May 16th, which is our budget vote, board elections, and then June 14th, which is our final meeting of the year. Comments by board members? No comment. I got a couple. Uh, I want to thank the American Legion for hosting Meet the Candidates last week. Uh, they did a, uh, a great job, even though it was an uncontested election. Uh, very professional. Uh, they were excited to do so. We appreciated them doing so. And our two board members, who are our two candidates, Mr. Bronson and Mr. Joyner, did uh, phenomenally. And obviously, uh, it's difficult when you know you're not debating in that situation. But uh, they took it seriously, and they really uh, they showed their experience and their wisdom and their value to our district. So congratulations to both. Also want to mention that uh, on Saturday there was a memorial bench dedication in the honor of uh, Zania Ojibe, who was a 26th grad of Walman High School, who unfortunately passed away uh, at the young age of 24, uh, very sadly, but uh, it was a very touching uh, bench dedication, and there's now three benches dedicated near the North Gym in her honor, so I was uh, honored to attend that. Dr. Delia. Oh, just a few things. Uh, yesterday, the school district had the opportunity to participate in a tabletop exercise with the Suffolk County Police Department and Emergency Management Services over at Walt Women in the Forum. Uh, this, what they do is they do this every so often, meeting every four or five months. Uh, we were fortunate to be selected, and we went through uh, an active shooter scenario and how the school would respond, how Suffolk law enforcement responds, and also emergency management. So it was a very uh, well worthwhile event. We all learned something, and uh, you know, it's very it's educational for everybody. And uh, I just you know want to say that uh, you know, but we never want to be in those kind of situations whatsoever. But there's never enough time to be prepared and to take out all the you know the time we can during the day to uh, make sure we're as safe as possible. And uh, we also have another event happening this weekend. On Saturday, we are actually having an actual active shooter drill that will be run by Homeland Security. 
uh, at Walt Whitman High School. It's going to start about 3 a.m. in the morning. And uh, we have some very happy people sitting around the table that will be there uh, making sure the doors are open. And uh, it will run till about 9 a.m. And there will be some parent squares that are, that are going to go out and in my weekly message as well because uh, there will be a host of emergency vehicles within the Walt Whitman parking lot, a lot of personnel, a lot of police officers rotating through because it's really a major practice for them. It's an opportunity for us to see how those situations will be handled if, you know, it ever happens. Um, but uh, it's definitely, you know, going to help us as a school district here to just be as prepared as we can that, uh, you know, God forbid there's ever that kind of situation. So there's never enough training. Uh, but we're happy to host, and we're happy we were selected. And, uh, you know, we don't want – I know my phone at about probably 3.30 in the morning, there's going to be some text messages going on, I think, because people are going to see so many police vehicles there that something must be going on. So they didn't listen to my weekly call, mm -hmm. or they didn't le read the email. But I know it's only a drill. So, But we're fortunate to have this opportunity. Um, Last but not least, I know we're honoring retirees next week, but I would also like to personally recognize Mr. Callahan for his, not only his, he's a wonderful teacher of, of language at the high school and foreign language, and uh, he's also 14 years as SHTA president. So uh, he's done a wonderful job as a teacher association president. There is, I've had two years to work directly with him, and we've had a great relationship but I know you know he speaks for the teachers when he says you know students are first and uh, you know we have a common bond there and uh, we're gonna wish him well uh, today but the game must go on that is I, I, I'm sorry but there was a vote last week and uh, there is a new president uh, that will take uh, effect there you go okay <laughs> Tell us how you really feel, okay. <laughs> uh, but we had the opportunity today, Dr. Murphy, Mr. Smith and I, to sit down with uh, Mr. Rob Morris, who is a language arts teacher at Stimson Middle School. And uh, it was a you know great first meeting. We'd love to continue that relationship that has been established for a number of years here in South Huntington. When the Teachers Association and the Board of Ed and the district get along, it's the outcome. It's all about students. So we are... Uh, Looking forward to continuing that. But thank you, Mr. Callahan, also for all of your years. Fourteen years. That's a long time in that position. That's not a position uh, for longevity. <laughs> it's like being the manager of a sports team. So congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, one other additional, I want to uh, just mention that Dr. Delia, Dr. Murphy, uh, and myself had the opportunity to attend uh, an Eid Gala on May 1st, uh, presented by the Eid Holiday Coalition, and it was, it was really uh, a wonderful thing in, in many ways. Uh, we got to learn a little bit about, about Ramadan and, and the holiday, and there was a play put on by the students who were just adorable. And then uh, a number of recognitions, districts that were recognized, and we were among those recognized for uh, establishing the Eid holidays on our calendar. And uh, it was just really nice to, when you were there, you really understood how much it meant uh, to them and, and how appreciative they were and how important it was. Uh, and you know, the students spoke about how it meant that they didn't have to choose between going to school and their studies. and. They felt respected and appreciated that and valued. So that was really, uh, it was very nice to be uh, invited and, uh, and very nice to participate in that. All right, comments by student ex officio. Samantha, anything else? Hi, so just quickly, um, I just want to take some time to invite you all to an event actually being hosted by Whitman's Muslim Student Association and the Voices of Walt Whitman. Um, we are hosting an event in hopes of raising money to provide relief to Turkey and Syria response to the catastrophic events and effects of the earthquakes and subsequent flooding which happened in the region. Um, voices will be performing a piece in Turkish and MSA will be selling bracelets, there will be art, food, and there will also be various performances done by many supporting students. Tickets will be sold at the door at Whitman's Performing Arts Center the day of and during student lunch periods at Whitman. 
and the event will take place on Wednesday, May 24th from 6 to 8 p.m. in Walton South Cafeteria. I hope to see you all support such a meaningful cause. It is honestly so important, and I'm really glad to even get to be a part of something so wonderful and that our district and our school support such meaningful events. And also, on a side note, a little happy note, I just wanted to take time to say Happy Teacher Appreciation Week to all the teachers. On behalf of the students, I just wanted to express my gratitude for all the teachers in our district who worked tirelessly to support all their students and overcome all the obstacles that come with learning, including like a literal pandemic. So thank you. Um, your efforts do not go unnoticed and will be remembered by your students for a lifetime, including you, Mr. Callahan. <laughs> Great, thank you. Great job, Samantha. All right, voice of the resident. Mr. Steve, I can yes. just add one thing. Yeah, go ahead. Up before. I just wanted to wish all the moms in South Huntington a happy Mother's Day this upcoming weekend. Beyond the moms in our community, um, there's moms here on our board, in our cabinet, teachers and administrators, and every mom in this district really has two families, their own family and their South Huntington family. And I just want to thank everyone for taking the time away from their own families to serve our South Huntington family and community. So I wish you a restful and wonderful day. Great. Thank you, Ms. Meyer. Uh, one other, uh, couple other personnel announcements uh, since they're with us today. Um, board approved tenure recognition for three individuals uh, who are going to be also recognized next week. But since they're here, I want to congratulate Dr. Joe Senamore on obtaining tenure in the tenure area of Deputy Superintendent. Annie McCallion, attending, attending ten, ew, excuse me, obtaining tenure in the tenure area of Elementary Principal. And Maria Colon, obtaining tenure in the tenure area of Elementary Assistant Principal. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, voice of the resident. All right, we'll take a motion then to go into executive session uh, to discuss a matter of personnel and employee evaluation. Uh, Mr. Bronson, seconded by Ms. LaCara. All in favor? Any opposed? Thank you all.